Hey, witches! We're taking a week off to get our ducks in a row for the imminent launch of Gender Playground, Marcel's new show, which you can learn all about at ohwitchplease.ca slash gender dash playground. That's slash gender dash playground. And for our new flagship show launching in July, which you can learn about on Patreon, in the spirit of not running ourselves into the ground, please enjoy this unlocked Patreon exclusive with Ellie Kremendal. Ellie is a comedian and a friend of the pod who hosts her own very good podcast, Shame Spiral. If this 25-minute bonus isn't enough content for you this week, we get it. And we recommend you go check out her show anywhere you catch your podcasts. It's perfect listening to tide you over until we're back in two weeks with another episode of Witch Please. Hello and welcome to another Witch Please Patreon exclusive bonus extravaganza special in depth investigative journalist interview. I'm Marcel Cosman. I'm Hannah McGregor. And our guest today is comedian and podcaster Ellie Kremendahl. Kremendahl, yeah? Yeah. 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 I've only listened to every single episode of your podcast <laughs> and watched like a hundred of your TikToks. So you'd think I would know how to say your name. It's a hard one. It's not. It's not. It's a beautiful, perfect name. Well, it's my husband's. I took it. Um, which. I was I was telling someone this recently on on an episode of my podcast, but I would not have taken his name if he was a cis guy. Like I feel really mm, clear on that. Yeah. But because he's a trans man, I was like, "Yes, daddy. Like I will take <laughs> your name." The whole thing is suddenly very hot to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I love this. I love this for you. Let my potential mispronunciation be only a reflection of my ambivalent relationship to patriarchy. Anyway, welcome, Elliot. It's a delight to have you here. <laughs> Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. Ellie, can you tell tell us about your podcast? Tell us, and by us, I mean me, because as we discussed uh, off mic, I don't listen to podcasts, and so I don't, I don't know your work. <laughs> but I do, and I've listened yeah. to every episode, and I'm really into it. So the podcast is called Shame Spiral. I just started it in September, I think was the first episode. So it's still kind of a baby podcast. And I'm a comedian and a writer, but my background is as a psychotherapist. So I'm kind of like exploiting my master's degree slash therapy skills to interview writers and comedians and artists and activists about um, shame and their relationship to shame. I have every person bring one particular story of something in their life that made them really hardcore shame spiral but that they can like talk about and not have like a trauma response now Uh (laughs) because it's not (laughs) therapy. Yeah. That's part of the, like in the, in the email, it's like something that really caused a spiral, but which you can joke about now. Yeah. Yeah. Cause I do have a fear of, um, landing in some accidental therapy territory (laughs) because, because it's really hard for me to like, I've been, I did, I, you know, I've been doing it for so many years, sometimes just without realizing I'll ask like a very intense question. And then I'm kind of like, wait, was that too mm-hmm. much? Was mm-hmm. it not? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I've only heard one episode where somebody cried on the podcast. And I feel yeah. like they cried in a way that very clearly you didn't make them cry. Yeah. I know which one you're talking about. Mm-hmm. I think that, no, I don't think I made her cry. I feel like she was right she was ripe to cry she was talking about a terrible she was talking I mean she was talking about you know transphobia and her experience as a trans woman like yeah it's a really legit thing to cry about but I absolutely sort of felt that empathetic like how do you walk that line between you want to keep it funny you want to keep it entertaining you want to keep it safe for the guest but also you want to like kind of delve into the shit a bit I feel like that is the dance that I'm learning with the podcast because I do feel a level of confidence about because I've you know I've been doing therapy for 13 years so I have just a sense of like I can read 
pe where people are at. And, you know, I can kind of, I mean, I was joking about it a minute, minute ago, but I do feel like I can get a pretty clear sense of like what is too much and what's not and, and track where people are at. And when I have gotten kind of into like a f fairly intense questions with folks, it's usually because I have that sense of like, this is their game for this. Mm -hmm. And then I feel like if shit gets real, I can hold it. Like I just have a, mm -hmm. the confidence that only comes from just doing that work for so long. And, and it's a lot less pressure for me as a podcaster. Cause I'm like, I don't have to actually be like, um, like I can trust that you're choosing to be here and to talk about this stuff. And I can kind of just trust you as a fellow adult doing mm -hmm. that you know <laughs> so we're really confused com convincing about the phrase fellow adult <laughs> hello ah, fellow, hello, fellow adult <laughs> yeah aren't we hello, both fellow adults ready to deal with our emotions like adults <laughs> so ellie tell me what hannah talked about <laughs> oh my god hannah talked some real shit about yeah. academia mm. hardcore named some names without <gasps> naming names nice. as we talked about like no real names were used but details were given beautiful wow. yes yeah I and i feel like hannah processed some trauma about <laughs> academia that mm -hmm. she needed to process mm -hmm. yeah yeah mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely i but one i keep coming back to how we opened the conversation by me saying oh, that yeah. i felt shame because you have had like you you have like a million Twitter followers and have had like Josh Gondelman, like people who I like real who I really think of as celebrities and really admire on your show. And I am, as I believe I said, a grubby little professor. <laughs> so funny. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. And then you were like, well, but you know, you're you're a whatever, an intellectual. And I was like, no, 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 no. And it was a really interesting moment of like, oh, wow, we all just walk around with some really powerful narratives about ourselves in our heads, huh? Oh, my God, totally. Mm -hmm. That that really was a magical moment when we opened with you sharing that, Hannah, because I, like I told you in the episode, like, I had literally been, I pressed record and I was filled with anxiety and shame about like, Hannah's so fucking smart. Like, you were thinking like, I'm a grubby, grubby little professor. And I was thinking like, I'm a fucking dumbass comedian like <laughs> what are you know this is so terrifying but it was beautiful kind of oh like in a meta way really getting into that right away it was such a relief it was so funny because it was so honest so one of the things that marcel this is for you one of the things ellie does on the podcast is a game where she gives people two scenarios and asks which one would make them spiral more. Oh, okay. That's yeah. a good game. I like that. It's a very good game. I kind of desperately, I don't know, Ellie, this is putting you on the spot. Any chance you've like got one just at hand that we could subject Marcel to Ooh. real quick? Because then I- That's so fun. Okay. I would like to then talk about the game because I think it's really interesting, but I also just want to watch Marcel do it. Okay, just give me- Give me a minute, and then you can edit out some of this pause. Coach? Coach? <laughs> hey, Coach? Edit this out. Okay. So you go to the gynecologist, and just for like a pap smear or whatever, and then the doctor, um, let's say he's a man, and he's like, without a, not a great bedside manner, and the doctor leans down to do the exam, and he like, stands back up with a look of disgust <gasps> and he's like um can you take out your tampon so you like left your tampon in and he just looks revolted mm -hmm. like as though what a horrible egregious thing to do okay okay so that's one okay two is that you are walking your dog down the street and um someone else's dog comes running toward your dog off leash and you're just kind of in a state and you, you can't, uh, you're so angry that this person was irresponsible with their dog. So without even looking at them, you just kind of go, you become your worst self. Like you're sort of like, what the fuck? Like, why are you doing this? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? How could you leave your dog off the leash? And then you um, 
kind of come to and look up and it is your therapist. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. And so which Which one would make you shame spiral more? And then you could say a little bit more about why. I got to say the second one, but that's only because I can't actually imagine myself in the first scenario because I would never let a man doctor do a pap smear. And I don't use tampons. Oh, okay. So, so I can, so I can precisely because of. <laughs> Oh, like that would be such an awful, like that's so awful that you've actually organized your life around never having that happen. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> okay. But what about, what about this then? What if it was a diva? What if it was a diva uh, cup? Yeah. Do you use I those? Do. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. What if it was a diva cup and a very sort of like a, a female doctor, the kind a with a very doctor. like punishing matriarchal <laughs> energy though. Yeah. Like. The 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 female version mm-hmm. of this guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like I've done something. I've done something wrong. I did it. Wrong. You're a bad, disgusting daughter, and she is like fancy, flawless mommy who's just like, why are you so disgusting? You know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I am so messed up. Like, why? <laughs> like, I, the way that I get like into these <laughs> scenarios is so fucked up. So, so with the adjusted scenario, absolutely the first one. Definitely the first oh, one. Oh, interesting. Yeah, because I organize my life around not having these kinds of experiences. And so if I had one, <laughs> if I found myself in such a scenario, I would, it, I would, it would, it would stay with me probably for years and I would have to get a different doctor. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I would yeah, never go. Deep. I would never go back to that doctor ever again. And and you know the situation with the the scenario with the with the therapist. Like I would also have to get a different therapist. Like I'd never <laughs> go back. <laughs> never. Okay, so we've established that your coping strategy is avoidance. <laughs> very good. Very good. Yes, that is a hundred percent accurate. Yes. 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 <laughs> Cut and run. <laughs> Gotta get out of there. Also, these are I, a lot. Marcel's a real classic Pisces, and her top coping strategy is naps. I know. I so when I get really stressed, I get really sleepy, and I so like mm-hmm. I've talked before. I think with Hannah about how sometimes, like when my partner and I are like really mad at each other and are like in like an extended fight about something. I will often just get really sleepy. And so I'm like incapable of having a conversation about it. I just go to sleep. (laughs) Oh my God. Does your partner get so mad? Um, no, I mean, Trevor's weird because his, his, the way that he gets angry is not like a normal person way of getting angry. Like he, I don't know how to, I don't know how to explain him. Uh, he just like he gets really mad and then if I were to fall asleep while we were in the middle of an argument I think he would just be like okay well I guess I'm gonna go do the dishes then and then just like go and be mad while doing the dishes instead of like now Marcel has done this thing it's more like oh Marcel is asleep so I must do dishes while mad (laughs) yeah so he'll go do some angry dishes like clinking clanging those dishes ellie which which one which one would make you spiral more mine is the first one without a doubt no question (laughs) for sure somebody witnessing me being a bitch in public yeah welcome to the show (laughs) this is this is what i'm like but somebody being like that for you your body is gross would be like well time to set myself on fire This is so interesting because you're both making me realize, okay, mine is the second one because I would feel, I would just, I would feel like my therapist had seen in real life, like had seen the live show of what I've been 
trying to explain to her that I'm so terrible. Now you've actually seen it. And I just feel like I could never show my face again, especially because I like my therapist. This is like my mental illness, but I like my therapist to think I'm like, great. 100%. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. But- yes. Yes. <laughs> And what's so interesting is with the first one, I think that my defenses would kick in where I would be like, you doctor are a terrible doctor. This is so unethical. My body is not gross. You are gross. And also I feel like I want to report you. Like that's where my head would go. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. I I, I love, I, I'm kind of delighted that you're just like, excuse me. Yeah. Excuse. How dare you? This is a temple. Yes. <laughs> okay. I see. I think the first. Okay. Like to be totally honest. Like I feel like what would happen. It was. It would be a progression because my first feeling would be shame and mm-hmm. humiliation. Sure. But then I think the defenses would kick in to rid myself of the shame, which is then where the like justice impulse, like the justice impulse, would be to serve the diminishing of the shame yeah. if that makes sense so it's not really that I'm so like evolved no. this is all a defense <laughs> I feel like with the therapist scenario I would feel so betrayed that my therapist was such a shit person Ooh. to just like let their dog run around <laughs> you know an element like, of that I didn't consider like, your therapist has been bad mm-hmm. how can you turn to yes, them for, yes, for they, guidance exactly Exactly. They can't be trusted. Mm-hmm. They're bad. So like I I acted in a way that embarrasses me, but they have proven themselves to be unworthy of my trust. So I think that's Okay. Yeah. It's kind of like it's kind of like what I have with the doctor a little bit. Like you're kind of like you are the bad person exactly. here. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Actually, no. <laughs> it's you who is wrong. Love that. Yes. Love that. Yeah. Right. Love yeah, that right. reframe. Always love a reframe. <laughs> oh my God. Oh yeah. So yeah. I love the way that you just pull these scenarios down. Like I said, as though from a cloud of horrifying things. Do you feel like like it's a way of like banishing them? Like, does does pulling them out and talking them through, particularly, like, with somebody else in conversation that is then going to be shared with a larger community, is that a way of, like, it feels almost, like, ritualistic to me. Like, we're going to take these scenarios and then we're going to talk them through and then we take their power away. Are you a witch? That's my question. I love that. I am a witch. I'm a casual witch. Um but I I love that framing of it as almost like an exorcism. Mm, mm-hmm. um, and, I, and I do think there is an element to that. Like I have uh, anxiety and OCD. And I, so it's not hard for me to think of humiliating, shameful scenarios. And I do think that there's a way that even me just spending like every week, I think of many of these and it's it turns it into something playful, right. which yeah. is instead of turning away from it, like it's like when you have anxiety and OCD, the impulse is to like, get away, get away, like, like shut it out. And obviously, like most of us know that that just makes anxiety stronger. Like, it's like, if you lock that door, like, I'm just going to keep pounding. So if I'm like, come in, <laughs> like, I do feel like that's kind of weirdly self-actualizing without meaning to like, that's not why I did it. And I think talking about it with people, like it is kind of like healing is a little too, I judge myself saying that, like, I don't know if healing is like too much, but I do think it's like transformative and um, kind of, um, it is ritualistic. It's kind of just like, we're going to go in to the, the things that are kind of the most untalked about talk about them, share them, and then we can like laugh about them. And yeah, the power just the power totally transfers. It's like when you have a horrible nightmare and when you start talking about it, all of a sudden the things that were scary about the nightmare stop being so scary because once you've put words to them, you're like, oh, it's weird that the door just opened by itself though. 
Why would it do that? No, you just put yeah. words to it and it got so scary. <laughs> I'm sorry. I picked a bad I picked a bad example. <laughs> I'll give you I'll give you a real example. Oh, yeah, my grandma was cutting the cloth with a butter knife and I knew that that meant that she was going to die. And then you say it out loud and you're like, "Well, that's insane. That's not a that's not Yeah. yeah. That that's nothing make any brains. Sense. Yeah. Take that, 5-year-old Marcel nightmare that stays with me. <laughs> Oh, sorry. Yeah. That's a real example. What's happening? Sorry, Ellie. I made you do therapy. <laughs> sorry. Okay, but you know what? To this is kind of what happens in on my podcast, though, because the content is so real that it just kind of takes us to these very human, kind of sometimes buried places. So it's very funny, but I think it can also be really moving. Um, so thank you for demonstrating that <laughs> in like a real time way. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> I am a witch. You are a I witch. Am a and you witch. make a very magical <laughs> podcast that somehow really manages to be so funny and entertaining and also so real and human and and healing. I I hope you know that you're making something really magical. Haha, ha, feelings. I can't stand that. I can't stand it, but I really appreciate it. I brought you here to to return the favor. Yeah, fuck you, Anna. So if people now obviously want to go listen to this podcast, where can people find it? Where can people find more of you? Yes, it is on Apple and Spotify and Stitcher, I believe, like all the places. It's that you listen, it's there. It's also on Buzzsprout, like hosted there. And you can follow me on all of the things at, at just my name, Ellie Krimendahl, or the podcast at Pod Shame Spiral. Those are the main locations. Thank yeah. you so much, Ellie. It's been such a delight chatting with you. Thank you so much for having me. I love your podcast. And I really appreciate this conversation. Thank you, Ellie. I'm excited to listen because you've given me a real, a real taste for <laughs> a real taste for the medicine. A I don't know what I'm saying. A real taste for the medicine, as the saying goes. But I'm excited. I will also say that I totally understand if you don't listen to it because you don't want to and that um, <laughs> no one has to listen to it. It should be consensual. <laughs> Sorry, that goes only for Marcel. Patrons, you have to listen. It's your ho- it's your homework. <laughs> you do have to listen to it. You do. Oh, and one fun thing that people could do, I would love if you want to do, is I'm starting to crowdsource some shame questions just in case I get low. And also because my brain is, you know, particularly idiosyncratically my brain, but I love hearing what other people's brains come up with. Um, so if you have any shame scenario ideas... DM me or you just email at shamespiralpod at gmail.com because I would love to hear them and then you might get to hear them on the episode. What a great idea. What a great idea. (laughs) I I have some. It's it's born out of laziness, but I'm spinning it. No, people love it. They love to help. (laughs) 